What's up, everybody? Welcome to Power Tech with your SEs. My name is Justin McKean, Solution Strategy Director at Power School. We're here to welcome you to episode 11, where we are going to be talking about emerging trends in finance, HR, and payroll. Some of you might just call it ERP. We've given a lot of love and attention to things that are happening on the academic side of the house. So it's time to shift gears. As we've talked about the wheel, right? We don't just have a student information system anymore. We've got a unified ecosystem that's here to support you. We're lucky to have Alan Krasicki here to join us today. He is a solution strategy director for the finance, HR, and uh, payroll solution. So Al, why don't you take a couple minutes and introduce yourself. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Alan Krasicki. I'm a solution strategy director with PowerSchool. I've been in the K-12 industry for over 24 years now, working with school districts all across our country and implementing and supporting our ERP products. Yeah, so Al's got extensive experience, which is what's so exciting about having him on the show. Uh, he's been around, he's worked at other vendors, he's worked in other locations within the space. So he's got a great pulse on not only just what's happening within education, but how other vendors are working to meet your needs. And that's what we're excited about at Power School is that he brings a perspective to our organization that's more just outside of our tunnel vision, which is Power School. So when we look at Again, I made the kind of play into what we're going to talk about today. We've talked a lot about COVID on the show and how it's impacted learning, how it's impacted the classroom, your teachers, your principals. And we really want to start to talk about how it's impacted that business office because, you know, those individuals, they worked in offices every day, maybe cubicles or something of that nature. They're spread out. They might be working fully from home where remote operations became immensely important. They're also dealing with time off, right? Someone gets COVID or COVID in their family and their pay rates are adjusted. There's a lot of challenges that come with running the business office that us folks, me, remember I was a former teacher, I just don't even think about personally. The other side of this is the CARES funding that came a few months back. There's more funding that's coming in 2021. We're looking at it from the academic perspective. It's okay, what products can we buy? What other things can we do to help our kids improve? Well, folks on the business side of the house are sweating because they have to manage all that money coming in, track it, and then just designate how it can be spent. So Al, you know, again, as we talked a lot about the academic side, talk about some of these things, remote operations, how the CARES funding has impacted things at the districts, and what your perspective is on how power schools help adjust to make sure those folks can be, st still be successful. Yeah, absolutely. I saw it firsthand with my wife being a second grade teacher and how it impacted the classroom and and having to switch to more of an e-learning platform. And I, I remember this summer setting up her classroom with the desks and separating them out with a tape measure and making sure they're six feet apart. But what we don't realize is how it impacted the district office as well. Uh, I worked with a number of districts that had to change the way their, their structure of their location was set up, whether that was adding in some shields or removing some desks or I worked with several districts that actually had re revolving schedules where some people would work remotely on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and some people would be in the office on, on alternating days as well. So certainly from a remote operations perspective, we had to, the district office had to pivot um, and making sure that they could still make sure the vendors are getting paid, the employees are getting paid, and, and businesses ran as usual. But then when we get into the tracking of the time off and the pay related to COVID, you know, whether it's the employee themselves that was exposed or if it was a family member where they had to take time off, um, you know, that put a lot of burden on the district office as well and, and having to track that activity and make sure that's all reportable. And as you mentioned too, now with the CARES Act money coming in, being able to track those in, in the system and be able to identify where we're spending that CARES money is, is very important to districts. Um, we, we have something called the job ledger that allows us to, to build out different account codes that are associated with transactions. So we'll be able to go in and specifically run reports on any activity related to CARES. And then the other part that we really don't think about too is the managing of the substitutes. That, that's a big burden on districts when we have staff that are out and making sure that we have you know, people in the classroom or people able to teach those subjects when, when teachers are gone. One of the things that we did at Power School is we offered right away out of the gate something called office hours. And that's where our subject matter experts came into a webinar and were able to provide some insight on how to better track and manage data related to COVID. 
And it was also a great opportunity for our districts that were part of that, that office hours to be able to share their experiences and how they're handling things and, and just to be able to network with your peers when it comes to handling something that we've never had to handle before. Oh, absolutely. And you brought up two things there, Al, that I, I that kind of stood out to me that I hadn't really thought about. You know, when we talk about all the work that schools had to do to let, let kids come back, think of the money that districts were spending that they weren't supposed to spend and different directions that the money had to pivot. I'm going to come back to that in a second. The other thing that Al talked a lot about was managing staff, substitutes. You know, we actually have a person on our team, um, on the solution engineering team, lives in Canada, and his wife is a teacher. They are looking to shut down their school for the remainder of the school year purely because of teacher shortage, not because of safety with COVID. Of course, that's obviously a concern, but they are literally looking to shut down the rest of the year. Now by shut down, I mean just go fully remote so the teachers can support everybody, but no more in-person learning because teacher shortages are really weighing in on that specific uh, board group. Now, going back to Al's our comment on, you know, spending the money and how I was saying, you know, we probably spent a lot of money district levels on things that they weren't planning to spend money on in 2020. I think the analytics component of that is crucial. Understanding at a real time, we can keep stakeholders involved. We understand trends. We understand where the money is going. And it kind of got me thinking about some of the enhancements I know we've made around analytics. And we always get talked in Al, I know you can and echo this as well, you know, what, what out of the box reporting? comes with this PowerSchool application. It, it, I always laugh at that because, you know, you always have a certain number of canned reports, but, you know, we still always think in this tunnel vision, how many canned reports do you have? How can I get the information out? I think COVID really shined the light on flexibility of reporting and analytics and understanding where things are going in the future. So Al, what are your thoughts on that as we look at analytics and how, you know, being able to create our own reports and look at things differently was really critical. Yeah, absolutely. Besides, you know, tracking of the COVID data, I think we're seeing an emerging trend when it comes to providing more than just out of the box reports. Now with our applications, we, we have, you know, I think there's 400 e-finance <laughs> reports that come standard with the application. But what we're seeing is a, a trend where people want easy to read charts and graphs with the ability to do some on-screen filtering. And, and these charts and graphs are gonna be based on your persona. So depending upon your role at the district, we'll be displaying different types of data. So if you're, for example, a purchasing director, we're gonna have all data related to purchasing, or if you're on the payroll or HR side. So really having some focused uh, dashboards that will allow us to do some on-screen filtering. And, and we can look at that trend data from whether it's from month to month or from one fiscal year to the next, or even if we're comparing different schools at our district, having the ability to, to see that on-screen analytics to help us make some better data-driven decisions is a key. Um, when we look at some of the reporting options too, having the ability to build your own custom reports with things like conditional formatting, where we can you know, highlight a specific cell with a shade of red if it goes under a threshold. A good example I like to use is any accounts that are below, let's say $5,000. We can have those display in red on the report. So not only are we looking at the data, but we're also making that data pop on the report. Um, another good example would be employees that have an expiring certification. You know, displaying those with a different shade of color is a great way to be able to make those things stand out. And of course, making sure our stakeholders are, are always involved and kept up to date on the, the, the data as well. So being able to schedule these reports and being able to email these off to your stakeholders without them having to log into the system is very important. So whether you're a principal or an athletic director or a department head, being able to keep up to date with that data. And then when I look at this over the course of time, I see in the second half, especially of 2021, we're gonna start seeing more and more dashboard data that's gonna make that information a one-stop shop to be able to get that data without having to go in and run different reports in different areas of the system. No, I love that. I mean, that's when we go back to that can report conversation, you know, we would run all these individual reports, but then you have to take those reports and somehow bring them all together to get the information out that you're talking about right now. And we've definitely taken a lot of effort and time into bringing more dashboards into the products, into the application so that people can see things in real time, right near real time, understand how the data is trending, how things are changing so that you're not doing all that added work, all that time saved 
It's just going to allow you to do other things to help improve your efficiencies. So when we talk about improving efficiencies, right, bringing some of the dashboards, as I was just talking about, you know, we, we did add some enhancements to the applications where when you log in, boom, you've got some information right there for you to take action on, or even some other areas where you can drill in right from the homepage and start to complete tasks. What other uh, adjustments have we made recently, or are we going to make in the future Al, around improving business processes and procedures? Yeah, absolutely. There's a number of different areas that we're looking to address when it comes to improving those efficiencies. And each district's going to be a little bit different as far as where they're at in those processes. Some districts are still using paper requisitions, for example. So being able to set up workflow processes to automate that, to have an electronic approval with email notifications. Whereas other districts, you know, we're starting to see more and more trends for letting the employees enter in expense reimbursements. That's a new module that we have on the eFinance Plus side, where they'll be able to go in and identify any expenses that they have, attach any receipts that are part of that or any other documents, and then routing those through an electronic workflow. So empowering the employees to be able to take action on their own information, whether it's time off requests or demographic changes, and it's really eliminating the need for the, the business office to do the manual data entry. Also other processes that we've rolled out recently are P-card processes. So where we're having an upload file from a bank where we can route those transactions to whoever had that credit card checked out at that time. Again, they can attach their associated documents, whether it's receipts or what have you, um, and then route those through the system for approval to ultimately create an accounts payable invoice to reimburse that bank. So that's a big enhancement that a lot of districts are really starting to look to roll out to take that burden off of the district office to having to record all that stuff manually to importing that data in to automate that. And that also provides us with a better audit trail. So when I look at you know, future enhancements that we're doing, it's, it's really looking to automate those processes. Another new option that we came out with on the Finance Plus side is student activities module. So being able to track down to the club level the activity that's associated with and the dollar amounts that are associated with each of these activities, whether it's a school sport or a club, um, getting that more granular detail tracking. And it provides, again, that better audit trail to make sure we're identifying where that money is being spent. Oh, man, it feels takes me back. Uh, as like an elder at my church, I mean, we got all these different activities and we're tracking where all the money's going. The thought that, you know, districts didn't have that opportunity is kind of nerve wracking, right? You know, there's large chunks of money then disappearing into this general fund and they don't really know as student council spending it or as band or whoever, you know, maybe bad examples, but it's awesome to see that we're looking at other ways to help districts stay more organized while also create those efficiencies. So, you know, the last question we have Al, is one that, you know, it's a tough one for us to talk about because we understand it from the company perspective, but we also know that this brings pain for you all, our customers. And, and I want to kind of tee it up with, you know, as Al was talking about those enhancements, right, the P card, the student um, activities, the new dashboards that have come out in some of the newer versions, those are all enhancements for folks to move on to the new versions. But we are encouraging a lot of you that may be a couple of versions behind to try to catch up and jump forward to make sure you're on the most current versions. So let's talk about, again, high level Al, when you look at that from your perspective, you know, understanding again, there's reasons that we want it to happen, but there's reasons our customers may not may not be as eager to get onto a new version. What are your thoughts and advice as someone who's been in the industry for so long? What are some of the benefits of staying current? Well, there's, there's a ton of benefits. Uh, first of all, you're getting the latest and the greatest uh, programs that are out there, but what it does from a business perspective is it allows us to innovate on the back end. So, rather than having to support four or five versions back and making sure that the compliance is there from a state reporting perspective and fixing the bugs and, and so forth, it's really gonna allow us to innovate. So when we look at modules like the expense reimbursement module and the student activity module, that's really some of the things that we're gonna be focusing on is adding in value into the system with these new enhancements. I think you're gonna start seeing a lot more data being shared between our other applications like applicant tracking and employee records. So those are some enhancements that are going to be key moving forward that are going to really allow our development staff to be able to address those without having to go back and support multiple versions of those operations. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it's really a win-win 
in the end. You know, it's a win for us because we can have more resources to innovate. And then you all are just on the most current versions, the most supported, best code, tightest code, as we make changes and adjustments over time. So we yeah. want to thank Al for, for joining us. Again, episode 11, emergency, emerging trends in finance, HR, and payroll. Some of you may just refer to it as ERP. We talked a lot about, you know, how COVID impacted the business finance side of the house the money that's coming in, how we've made adjustments to, you know, add some enhancements while also make a change with the reporting aspects, providing more information to you up front so that you can understand how things are changing as we look at this crazy world that we're tackling. Al did a nice job also talking about where we're going in the future, right? Talking about how some of these other enhancements are going to help us as we emerge out of the COVID effects and start to get back to life as normal. So again, Al, thank you so much for joining us. For those of you that are here, remember to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you have any suggestions, comments, concerns, throw them right there on YouTube so that we can see them, we can respond to them. And if you have any suggestions for future shows, let us know. Until next time, take care. Take care.